Hey guys, Churchy here. In this guide, I want to show you the Phoenix, a fire-focused mage build that hits 99% mana cost reduction and 100% increased fire damage. It's a pretty powerful build, and with a bit of practice, it can take on some of the endgame bosses. It's a lot of fun to play, and you'll be throwing fire and fury at your enemies and looking damn stylish while doing it. Anyway, let's get to it. Prologue. Put Clan Sage Robe in a legacy chest. So the first thing you need to do is buy the Clan Sage Robe and put it into a legacy chest so it can be retrieved later as the Red Clan Sage Robe. You can do this on any character you already have and can do it pretty quickly with the Cierzo Storage Legacy Chest and some split screen shenanigans. I've left a link in the description to a video about legacy chest and split screen shenanigans, but for the purposes of this guide, I'll be putting the Clan Sage Robe in the Spire of Light legacy chest. It's a little more difficult to access, but this method doesn't involve split screen and will also set things up nicely for retrieving the Red Clan Sage Robe later in this guide. So on a new or existing character, head over to Berg in the Enmerkar Forest. On a new character, all you have to do after starting is buy six travel rations from the Cierzo shopkeeper save 175 silver and then head from Cierzo to Berg. Once you're in Berg, buy the Clan Sage Robe from Vey the Alchemist. It costs 175 silver. How can I help you? Now leave town via the Northern Gate and head north to the Hallowed Marsh. Avoid any fights on the way and make sure you have three travel rations to travel to the Hallowed Marsh region. Once you're in the Hallowed Marsh, you'll find yourself on a small island in the southeast corner of the map. Make your way north to the Ziggurat Passage. Once you're inside the passage, head right and go up the elevator, then activate the lever in the area behind the skeleton and head back down the elevator. Now go through the passage that's opened on the left. Avoid the blade dancer and make your way up the stairs on the left part of the room, activate the lever in this area and head back out to the entrance. Now the gate to the passage in the middle of the structure should be open. Head through the gate and then quickly veer right, grab the Jade Lich Idol and head back out to the entrance area. Place the idol on the pedestal. This will activate a bridge outside. Head back outside the way you entered and then make your way across the bridge. Now head west to the Spire of Light. Once you're inside the Spire, activate all the levers to remove the barrier in the basement and to activate the teleporters. Thank you. 
head into the basement and then activate the lever in the back room to activate the nearby teleporter. You'll need to use that teleporter to access another lever that will then open the gate, blocking the final teleporter that you need to use. Once you've activated that lever, head back down and use the teleporter that was locked behind a gate. Once you've gone through this teleporter, you'll be near the legacy chest. There's usually an enemy in this area, so try and avoid him, or if the enemy is near the legacy chest, lure it down to the teleporter, then head up to the chest and activate it. Put the clan sage robes into the chest, and congratulations, this character's job is done and you're ready to make a new character. Step one, farm and get spellblade skills. Make a new character and select the character who put the clan's age robe in the legacy chest as the legacy option for this new character. Finish the call to adventure quest by paying off your blood debt either with silver or a writ of tribal favor. Then talk to Oliel and Yuzan and Rissa to make them leave town during the looking to the future quest. Farm up about 4,500 silver. This will be enough to cover equipment, travel and skill costs. You can find links to some farming methods in the description. Say hello to Ito the Spellblade in Cierzo. Buy the following skills for a total of 1,800 silver. Steady Arm, Fitness, Spellblade's Awakening, Infuse Fire, and Elemental Discharge. Step two, prepare potions and unlock mana. Before you leave Cierzo, you should prepare some potions and food for the journey ahead. If you haven't already, then buy an alchemy kit from the alchemist and a cooking pot and nomad backpack from the shopkeeper. Keep a primitive satchel with you, you'll need it later in the guide. Also buy one gabberry wine from the chef, you'll need that later as well. While not a requirement, also consider buying the Scholar Circuit, Attire and Boots from the Alchemist. Each piece of the Scholar Set provides 10% mana cost reduction, which can be helpful when you're putting this build together. Set up the cooking pot and alchemy kit on a couple of campfires. Combine one thick oil with water at the alchemy kit to create three warm potions. Some other handy potions and foods when putting the build together are astral potions, soothing tea and termit pottage. Combine one star mushroom, one termip, and water at an alchemy kit to create three astral potions. Combine three termips and one salt at a cooking pot to create three termip pottage. And combine one seaweed with water at a cooking pot to create one soothing tea. Once you have the build set up, try to always have a supply of alpha jerky as well. Combine two raw alpha meat and two salt at a cooking pot to create five alpha jerky. Eating alpha jerky will provide enough health regen to negate the fire damage you cause to yourself when using immolate and you'll be using that spell a lot and alpha jerky will also give you the rage boon which gives you some extra impact. A good source of alpha meat are the alpha coral horns in the Enmerkar forest. They're weak to fire so an easy target for this build. When you leave Cierzo, make sure you have at least 3 astral potions, 3 soothing tea, 3 termit pottage, 3 warm potions, 6 thick oil and 6 travel rations in your backpack. Also bring along a mining pick and make sure you bring your alchemy kit with you. Now you're ready to head south to the Conflux Mountain. Before heading into the mountain, do a sweep around and up the mountain to find some mana stones. Combine one mana stone with one thick oil at an alchemy kit to create one fire stone. You need a fire stone to cast Sigil of Fire, and Sigil of Fire is another skill you'll be using a lot with this build. Try to make at least three fire stones before entering the mountain. Also keep one mana stone spare, you'll need it in the next step of this guide. Head to one of the Conflux paths, I usually use the Holy Mission path. It's a quick and easy path, talk to Zvirian, what you need. clear the enemies or just avoid them. Activate the three levers in the side chambers to unlock the gate and continue onwards to the Conflux Chambers.
There are some mana stone nodes in one of the lower side chambers. If you've cleared the enemies, it's worth mining them. Make your way to the ley line and unlock mana. You'll only need to trade 5 health and stamina for 20 mana. When First Watcher talks to you after you unlock mana, get him to teach you the Sigil of Fire spell. Step 3. Get Shaman skills. Leave the Conflux Mountain via the boat, and then from the beach head north and then east to the Ghost Pass. Near the entrance to the Ghost Pass, you can find some ghost plants, harvest these and find a safe spot nearby to set up your alchemy kit. Then combine one ghost's eye with water at the kit to create three mist potions. Combine one ghost's eye, one mana stone and one gabbery wine to create one spiritual varnish. You'll need a mist potion and spiritual varnish later in the guide. Make your way through the Ghost Pass and then head to the Cabal of Wind Tower, also known as the Hermit's House. When you arrive, buy the following skills from the Cabal Hermit for a total of 650 silver. Call to Elements, Weather Tolerance, Shamanic Resonance. Mana Push can also be a useful spell to pick up, but it isn't a requirement for the build. You can also come back later and grab the Sigil of Wind spell. It also complements this build by allowing for some extra spell combinations, but it's also not a requirement. Or you can pick up the Infused Wind spell instead of the Sigil if you want to focus more heavily on melee combat. Step 4. Get Philosopher Skills. Next, head back through Ghost Pass. And make your way east to the Hallowed Marsh. Follow the Pilgrim Road. The glowing pillars will guide you all the way to Monsoon. Once you're in Monsoon, find Alamon the Philosopher and buy the following skills for a total of 1,150 silver. Mana Ward, Leyline Connection and Fire Affinity. You should already have Sigil of Fire from when you unlocked mana in step 2. If you don't, buy it now. Step 5. Scaled Satchel and Red Clan Sage Robe. Leave Monsoon and head south to the Spire of Light. Take the eastern road past the Giant's Village. Along the way you'll usually encounter a couple of pairs of Stekosaurs, cast Ring of Fire, and then lure them towards the ring with elemental discharge. Step back into the ring and use spark to shoot fireballs at them. If all goes well, you'll usually be able to get at least three scaled lever from the four stecker saws you encounter. If not, you may have to search closer to the spire for more. Combine three scaled lever with a primitive satchel to create a scaled satchel. Equip the scaled satchel and transfer your gear to it the Scaled Satchel will not interfere with your dodge, so it's a great backpack for this build. Once you've made it to the Spire of Light, head inside, activate all the levers, and make your way back to the legacy chest that you put the Clan Sage Robe into during the prologue of this build guide. Retrieve the now red Clan Sage Robe from the legacy chest. You should also grab the Pillar Grade Hammer that's leaning on the wall near the chest. You can sell it in Levant for 900 silver. Leave the spire via the basement, 
By activating all the levers, you've also lowered a barrier outside, so you're able to cross the bridge and head southeast to the Enmerkar Forest. Step six, buy a hat. Make your way to Berg in the Enmerkar Forest. Now that you've made it to Berg, it's a good time to have a rest and restore some burnt stamina. Next, buy a wide black hat from Vey the Alchemist for 200 silver. Before leaving, make sure you have 11 travel rations. You can buy them from the shopkeeper, chef and caravaner. Step 7. Get a few things in the Abrasar. Leave Berg via the Northern Gate and head east to the Abrasar Desert. Head east across the desert to the city of Levant. Buy a mage tent for 175 silver from shopkeeper Sul and sell the pillar grade hammer. Buy the warm spell for 50 silver from Smooth the Tailor. Now head back out into the desert, head northwest from Levant to the Walled Garden. You'll find a few different golems here. Golems are weak against ethereal damage, so equip a weapon, drink a mist potion, and apply a spiritual varnish to your weapon. Place a sigil of fire on the ground and use a flint and steel on it to cast Ring of Fire. Use Elemental Discharge to lure enemies towards the sigil of fire, and then stand on the sigil and cast Spark. Sigil of Fire and Spark combined to cast Fireball. Once you've defeated the Guardian, you can find the compass with Staff on his body. Step 8. Get Golden Lich Boots. Now it's time for a pretty tough battle. You're going to fight the Lightmender, a Lich who focuses on lightning damage. Head back to the Hallowed Marsh and head back to Monsoon. Buy some marshmallow jelly and bread. Can I help you? And make some marshmallow tartine. Combine one bread and one marshmallow jelly at a cooking pot to make three tartine. Also make sure you have some life potions, a mineral tea, and a blessed potion before you head to the Spire of Light. Make your way back to the Spire of Light, head inside and make your way up the Spire until you encounter the Lightmender's throne. He'll talk to you, and then you'll have a chance to set yourself up before activating his throne to fight him. He has 20% fire resistance, but you'll be doing enough fire damage that it won't matter much. Before you fight him, make sure you've slept in the mage tent, and then drink a mineral tea, water, a blessed potion, a warm potion and eat some marshmallow tartine. Then activate Infuse Fire. This will use up the Warm Boon, so cast the Warm skill to get the Warm Boon again. You don't need to, but if you want even more fire damage, combine Mana Ward with Sigil of Fire to cast Immolate. If you do use Immolate, eat an Elf Jerky as well if you've got one. Here's a clip of this build fighting the Lightmender. Hopefully this helps you get a feel for how to fight him. One thing to keep in mind when fighting him is that you should always try and avoid his large sweeping attack that sends out a bunch of lightning projectiles.
Once you've defeated him, you'll get the Golden Lich set. The boots are the only part you really need for this build, so equip those. Step 9. Holy Mission Skills You can join whichever faction you like, but this build benefits most from the Holy Mission passives, especially the Divine Assistance passive, which helps you reach 99% mana cost reduction. Divine Assistance provides 10% stamina and mana cost reduction. The stamina reduction can be helpful during boss fights. To get Divine Assistance, make sure you find Zephyrian in the Forest Hives in the southeast of Enmerkar Forest during the Doubt and Secrets quest. Also make sure you complete the quest within 30 days. Step 10. The Thermal Claymore. You should be powerful enough at this point to farm some of the endgame bosses to acquire some endgame crafting materials, so finish your faction questline and start farming bosses. The final step in this build is to get a Pearlbird's Courage, Haunted Memory, Leyline Figment and Vendavil's Hospitality and then combine those to make a Thermal Claymore. Once you have the Thermal Claymore, you'll not only deal slightly more fire damage, but you'll also be a much more powerful melee fighter. You can also buy Pommel Counter from Burak and Ciezo and assign it to R in the quick slots to be even more effective. However, you'll also lose the 20% mana cost reduction the Compass Wood Staff provides, so use the weapon that works best with your playstyle. Epilogue. Quick Slots and Strategy. My Quick Slots are set up as follows. For a ranged playstyle, Spark on Q, Elemental Discharge on E, Mana Ward on R, Sigil of Fire on 1, Flint and Steel on 2, Warm on 3, Warm Potion on 4, and Infuse Fire on 5. For boss fights and a more melee focused playstyle, Mana Ward on Q, Elemental Discharge on E, Push Kick or Mana Push on R, once I'm in the end game, I usually assign Pommel Counter to R, Warm on 1, Warm Potion on 2, Infuse Fire on 3, Marshmallow Tartine on 4, and Life Potion on 5. The strategy of the build is to reach 99% mana cost reduction and look stylish doing it by acquiring the Divine Assistance passive, equipping the Wide Black Hat, Red Clan Sage Robe, Golden Lich Boots, Compass Wood Staff, and having a snooze in the Mage Tent. You'll also be getting 40% increased fire damage from your gear and the Fire Affinity passive. This reaches 70% once you cast Immolate, and because of the Shamanic Resonance passive, it'll hit 100% if you drink a Warm Potion or cast the Warm spell. The Thermal Claymore acts as a great alternative weapon choice and will give you an extra 15% fire damage rather than 10%, which brings your total to 105%. When you've had a snooze, equipped all that gear, and cast your spells, you're ready to unleash a lot of fire damage quickly from a distance, or you can also be quite mobile and fire off elemental discharge and then easily roll in and out of melee distance. In most cases, the scaled satchel is the best choice of backpack for this build, because it doesn't interfere with your dodge roll, and being able to dodge unhindered is very important sometimes, and helps keep you mobile. A nice backpack for mages, because it fits the theme so well, is the Preservation Backpack, which you can acquire by helping Belira during the Vendavil quest. Anyway, that's it for this build guide. You've become one with the Phoenix and can use a variety of fire-based skills to start fires wherever you go. Hopefully the info in this guide has been useful. Have a good day or night, whichever it may be, and I'll see you in the next video.